So this hole is 22, so about 11. So there's a small gap here of 21 between where we have the wheel and the next shaft. So let's estimate it looks approximately like this. And I redraw because it's the same shaft that I have at the top. So I can redraw the same shaft here. And on this side, the housing will look exactly the same, keeping in mind that we have our gap here. So we can already draw in our housing on both sides. Okay, and remember, these two components are two different components. So you can hatch them differently, or you can hatch them the same, because they're not right next to each other. But when there are two components right next to each other, you want the hatching to be different, ideally. Okay, so that is that part. Here we have our second shaft protruding. also has these small holes and we can also add our center line in here and at the bottom we have a small little piece here left of the bottom so we can have a small piece left that indicates to us the bottom part of our housing okay so that's our housing and the bottom uh, shaft that we have here that's holding onto the hook so here we can start by adding in the hook. We know if we have the hook here, it's 60. Remember, that's the same distance as our shaft. And it's 30 on the inside, which is the diameter of the shaft. So it makes sense that it will fit around there. So if we add the hook in here, the hook is a solid component. So we don't necessarily hatch a whole solid component. We only hatch here at the top. And once we get to the solid part here, we can just redraw that exactly as we see it. So also important to look at what is the thickness here. So if I have 30 as my inner diameter and 40, 48 as my outer diameter, it means the difference between the two is 18, which means this thickness is 9. Okay, So if that thickness is 9, it means that in this space where I determined where there was 21, I have this 9, which is the wheel. And it's exactly 60, so it exactly fits on there. And I section that part of the hook and the same at the bottom. At the bottom we want to say how far it's going to come out from the bottom and so once we see that that's also 9 and we can estimate how long the housing was we can have an idea of how this hook will look. So the hook you literally redraw in the same way as it looks here. I'm not going to go through that. I'm just going to do the small bit that is still sectioned so it's a partial section where I then see that is a solid component. Now the last thing I need to have here is I need something to hold this whole thing together. And I know I was given the castle nut. So I add the castle nut on all four points. I'll add castle nuts. So I'm only going to draw it once so the rest will all be the same. I'll have my castle nut and you redraw the castle nut exactly as you see it here. Remember that that groove that I have there intersects with that point. So you're redrawing your castle nut. And through this hole, remember that's where the split pin will be. And the split pin is slightly wider than the groove. So you'll draw the split pin in like that. And there's still a, a piece of the shaft protruding. If you look at the distance here, it's 18 plus 8, so 26 in total. And remember, after we put our housing here, we had 30 left. So it's 30 left, and then we still have the 26 for the castle nut. It does mean that there's a small piece of that shaft protruding. So just to show you a cleaned up version of how that will look, because of course you'll have the possibility of erasing your lines because it will be in pencil. So we'll have our castle nut looking like that. You'll split pin here in the middle and the slight groove over there with this top piece of the shaft. Okay, so that's how the final assembly will look. But you can also go and look at your notes. There's a 
very nice example of how to draw them, so it will be easy for you to see how to do that. Okay, so adding these four onto the four points, and that will be the section view complete. Now the external view is pretty straightforward, so I'm not going to draw it in detail, but let me show you the memo so we can look at a couple of additional features here. Okay, so very important here you can see everything has been drawn in and making sure that these split pins are slightly wider than that groove, so just make sure that that is definitely something that we can see in your drawing. You also want to make sure that there's that gap, remember the gap between the bush and the outside housing. And now here when we're redrawing this on a full external view, we can show that these castle nuts, we see the top part, we see these heads, so it must show that when we look in this direction, we look at the heads. So don't turn these legs and heads around, make sure to keep them in the correct orientation. Okay, so a couple of important things here. Can you see the section line here, which looks like a center line, but it's drawn all the way through where we actually made that section. And then on the ends we make a line and we name it AA and we actually name this section AA. Because this is not running through the center but it's an offset section we have to name it and we have to indicate that this is the section that we're talking about. So that's the one thing. The second thing is the part list and the bubbles. So let's look at the part list. Your part list will be drawn on top of your title block in your drawing sheet. So we will go through this with you in the practical class a couple of times. You have your title block and you just extend the title block or the part list from that title block. We always number from one up to however many components we have. And we typically start with the bigger components at the bottom and we gradually work up to the standard components. In this way, if there's anything more that we need to add, we can just add another component at the top. So you don't have to, if you numbered from one down and you have an additional component, you have to erase the whole thing. So very important to remember how to do this. How do we actually indicate this on the drawing? So for example, if we looked at our drawing here, there's a couple of ways how we can indicate this. Either we make a dot on the part, we extend a line out, and we make a circle at the end of the line with the number that the component is. So that's the one method, that's correct. Alternatively, you can make a dot on the point, extend the line out, make a small horizontal line, and then only make your number. Important here is that this piece and that piece is the same length. This will be incorrect. If you do this, that will be incorrect because can you see that this piece is a lot longer than the actual diameter of your bubble. Okay, the other way that you can do this is you can have an arrow pointing towards the component, the same as your dimension line arrows, and you can just extend that and draw your one. And again, you can use this little neck piece for this method as well. So just an indication to the component is either to it with an arrow or on it with a dot. And you either have the bubble directly attached to that leg or you have a small little neck piece and it's a very small piece, the same as the diameter of that circle. Okay, so that's something to take uh, note of and you use one throughout. So when you decide this is the method I use, you use that through your whole drawing. Whichever you decide, you stick to that method. So you can see here they've indicated everything as a dot on component and drawing it out without a little neck piece. Another important thing here is to notice that all of these are in line with each other and you don't have to have everything on one drawing. You can have them on more than one view, whichever is comfortable for you. Sometimes it's actually more comfortable to split them apart. Um, you do not want to cross any of your dimension lines. So that rule still applies. You still do not cross anything over the dimension lines. So let's look at our dimensions that we have for assembly drawings. Different to the normal orthographic drawings, here we want you to think about specific dimensions that are important. Now the first one is the one that you always will get right and you should always add in and get 100% for these first three. The first three are the overall length, the overall height and the overall width. So you'll see, for example, this dimension is the overall width of your final assembly. And so that's an overall dimension, and you definitely should always have that one. If you look here, from the complete top to the full bottom, here we have the overall height, and that is something that you can always get. So you calculate through what you have, and this is an exact value that you get. 
and your overall length from the widest two points and that is your three overall dimensions. Now those three you should always be getting completely correct. The second two sometimes takes a bit of thinking and getting used to. The one is mounting dimensions and the other one is functional dimensions. Now if you think about mounting dimensions, a mounting dimension is how I am actually mounting this assembly to something else. So whether it's I am hanging it off a rail or a rope or an I-beam or I'm fastening it to a desk or the floor, what do I need to know in order to attach this to something else? Now this is a cable trolley which means it's going to run on a cable which is why they've drawn in this cable here. That's not actually part of your assembly but they've drawn it in here so you can make a diameter indication of how big this cable needs to be that I have running through this pulley. So this will count as a mounting dimension. The second one has to do with how I'm mounting. So this wheel is an important part of how I am mounting. And so the distance between where this cable will run in the wheel, that will also be a mounting dimension. In this case, those are your only mounting dimensions that you have. Now functional dimensions, when we think of functional dimensions, the functional dimension has to do with what am I going to use this assembly for? Once I've mounted it on a cable, I'm actually going to attach something to this hook to move it around or in some specific direction. So what I need to know in terms of what I can add to this, how big this hook is, those are all functional dimensions. So first, the size of this circle, that's a functional dimension. 